Here we are criticizing stock market investors who lose like 20-30% on a particular stock. Here is an entire entity which has massive amount of capital with it and it loses 98-99% of public money on some investments. Because I feel that HDFC AMC will improve its ROC and will come back but Marcellus has sold. Hi everyone, if you take a look at this particular chart, you will see that this company has lost 90% of its value from its peak. Now you would say that, okay, what is the big deal? Probably it is a penny stock or in big, big stock markets, small, small things keep on happening. So what is the big deal about it? The big deal is that this was actually a monopoly stock and a monopoly company. The company in question here is Kodak. And if you would have used analog cameras and you can go check with your parents and ask them name of a camera that they used to use, it was Kodak. This company used to control 85% of the market share in the camera industry and used to generate $10 billion in sales. Why am I telling you this story? Because we sometimes believe in truths like that, okay, just buy a good stock and just hold it forever. You will make crazy amount of money. There are several myths that you must understand as normal retail investors. And this is the precise topic of today's video. I'm going to divide this into three chapters. So first, I'm going to talk about five key myths associated with investing in the stock market. If you are a beginner or even an intermediate level player in the stock market, please watch this section. Very, very important. Second, I'm going to talk about three buy and forget type of stocks as per today's scenario. Third and finally, along the video, I will speak about some of the key businesses that are at the cusp of innovation. So they can become like buy and forget type of stocks or their business model can entirely go away. So this is the precise topic that we are going to discuss. Also, please check our sponsors for today, which is Ditto. They are an excellent insurance buying platform. They can help you get relevant information on buying health insurance and term insurance. You can speak with an expert absolutely free of cost. You can use the link in the description box to avail that free phone call. So the first very common myth in the stock market is that you must buy and forget good stocks. This is an absolute crazy point. Please do not do this. You will go bankrupt. First example was of Kodak. Now let me start throwing more examples at you. So here is a list of US based giants that have gone bankrupt despite being listed in the stock market. Now here is another list of Indian companies that have either gone bankrupt or are on the verge of bankruptcy. So the point that I'm trying to drive home is fairly simple that companies in the US or rather giants in the US have literally gone bankrupt and companies in India too that were giant at some point in time, even they have gone bankrupt. So if you buy and hold these type of stocks forever, guess what? You are going to lose insane amount of capital. So please don't believe in this. And there are three specific reasons why I say it. So first and foremost, the nature of business changes. Here is an entire timeline of Codex, so you can go through it, understand it, what were some of the issues that they ended up facing. The primary issue with a company like Codex was that it was unable to change its business model. Now businesses, as per Mark Cuban, who is a celebrated entrepreneur, are living and breathing creatures. You have to nurture them, you have to regularly monitor them. Same goes for businesses, that businesses are thrown so many challenges that they have to rework, replan their strategies every five years. So if you simply buy good stocks and forget about it, there is a very good chance that you might not make any money. And if you stop monitoring your stocks, you might end up losing your entire capital as have happened in these multiple companies that I have outlined. The second key reason why you should not buy and forget stock is that you do not know the internal functioning of the stock or that company. A classic case in point is that you can compare the performance of ICICI with HDFC Bank. So let me first take you to the chart of ICICI Bank and juxtapose that with HDFC Bank. So if you take a look at the pricing history of ICICI Bank, what you will notice is that in 2014, it was trading at roughly 319 rupees. Then it went down to approximately 170 rupees. So there was an erosion of 40-45% of wealth on ICICI Bank stock. You would say that, okay, probably market would have fallen or 2022 like situation would have happened or 2008 like situation would have happened. Okay, so let us compare it to a peer bank, which is HDFC Bank. So let us compare the stock performance from end of 2014 to 2016. So this is end of 2014 to HDFC Bank and it went up from 471 rupees to end of 2017 to roughly 650 rupees. So there was a jump of 33% on HDFC Bank and a loss of approximately 45% on ICICI Bank. Now, if you were sitting in 2014 thinking that, you know what, HDFC Bank is also great. ICICI Bank is also great. Nothing bad will happen. I will just buy my stocks and sit and hold forever. Guess what? ICICI Bank kept on tanking. Why? Because there was an internal scam that was uncovered at ICICI. ICICI Bank. 
But consider this that in 2014, did anyone think, anyone think that ICICI Bank is a bad stock or we should not be buying and holding that stock? There were FIIs, DIIs that were buying ICICI Bank, a scam got uncovered and people lost a lot of money. So the basic point is that please don't just simply buy and forget stocks. Please keep a regular watch on whatever you are purchasing if you are doing direct stock investing. So here is a very quick homework for you. So take a look at these three stocks and all these three stocks are undergoing a massive change right now. One company, according to me, is not going to perform well going forward in the future because its business model is getting threatened. Second company, right now there is a lot of talk about it, but I feel that its business model might go very well from this point on. And third is a very established company, but it is facing massive competition from one of the growing players in the industry. So categorize them and play the guessing game with me that 10 years from now, that which of these companies are going to do exceptionally well and why? I will put my answer in the pinned comments. With that said, let us speak about the second myth, which is that you should buy the stocks of the companies whose products you use on everyday basis or quite frequently. Okay, so this again is a myth. Why I can give you a few examples around it. Now, one of the most frequently used product is trains and it's a monopoly stock. I'm talking about IRCTC. Now, here is the journey of IRCTC that at one point in time before stock split, it is adjusted and the stock prices are shown accordingly. So it was trading at roughly 1100 rupees. Right now it has been crushed by almost 40, 45% again. And the stock is generally going down. Now, this is a trend that you will see being followed on every single PSU stock. So should you stop buying PSU stocks? The answer is no, but you should only buy them when they are available at a decent price. If you buy them super high the way people were buying IRCTC stock, in fact, I came out with a video and you can check the links here. You can watch it. I released it sometime last year saying very categorically that IRCTC is not a good buy. Now, keeping that discussion aside, the simple point is that you will use a ton of different products from PSUs. But from stock performance perspective, PSU stocks do not give you good returns because PSUs are not managed well to make money for its stockholders. A classic case in point is LIC. Now here is a list of investments by LIC and take a look at the amount of loss that they have taken on some of their investment. For example, Amtec Auto, LIC is an investor. Alok Industry, ABG Shipyard. Now imagine losing 98% of your money on listed stocks, not once, not twice. There have been series of things where LIC have lost money. I will leave it to your imagination why LIC does these kind of investments. And here we are criticizing stock market investors who lose like 20, 30% on a particular stock. Here is an entire entity which has massive amount of capital with it and it loses 98, 99% of public money on some investments. So the point that I'm trying to drive home is fairly simple that people use IRCTC on everyday basis, LIC insurance if you have to buy. At one point in time, LIC had 100% penetration in the insurance market in India. Now, just because because you know about the brand IRCTC or LIC does not make them a great investment. Now I can give multiple examples from private companies also, but probably we will keep that discussion for some other video. But to cut the long story short, please do not invest in companies just because you use their product or know about their brand value. That might be a really bad investment strategy. Now comes a third myth of investing in the stock market. And this is a very contentious point and people will start a fight about it because this viewpoint has been propagated by Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee. So let me speak for a few seconds about the investment philosophy of Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee and my viewpoint on that. So first and foremost, I really admire Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee. He was on my YouTube channel, deeply respect him. So that's point one. Point number two is all investors can have different investing style. Now, third point is that Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee has popularized something called as ROC, return on capital employed in the US. It is called as ROIC or return on invested capital based investing. Marcellus Fund, which is managed by Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee and team, they focus a lot on ROIC, ROC. And recently they sold HDFC AMC, citing the viewpoint that you know what, ROC has gone bad and therefore we are selling this stock. Now, incidentally, the stock has fallen by roughly 40%. And just to put a quick disclaimer, I'm not citing that this is a good move or a bad move. If you want me to make a separate video on HDFC AMC in detail, I am happy to do it. Just let me know in the comment box. I'll be happy to do it. I am not selling HDFC AMC, by the way. Now, the third myth in the stock market is that you must only invest in high ROCE or ROIC based companies. Now, what does this mean and why do I consider it to be a myth? So let me explain my viewpoint. So first and foremost, let us understand what ROCE or ROIC means. It simply means return on 
capital employed. In simple words, it means that every company raises a certain amount of capital. So let's say that HDFC AMC gets 100 rupees to manage the capital, use it for growing its own business. Then how do they use it and what return do they generate on that capital is called as ROC. So if you give HDFC AMC 100 rupees, then traditionally it has generated 36.2% return on that capital. So they made 100 rupees and turned that into 136.2 rupees by the end of the year. So this is what ROC means. This is the first related point. Now, why do I say that you need to look at ROC or ROIC more holistically? Simply because of the fact that this is a backward looking matrix. What is meant by backward looking matrix? Let me explain that by giving a simple example. So many a times when you buy mutual funds, how you are sold mutual funds? You are sold that if you know what, Akshat buy this mutual fund because its past return has been 15% or 20%. So you will get super enticed that okay, 20% return I'm getting. I will definitely go and invest because I'm hopeful that this fund is going to generate 20% return from year on year till infinity. So that is the thought process with which we buy stuff. Tell me in the comment box if that is how you buy mutual funds, that you look at the past results and you simply buy hoping that it would continue to generate similar results. So this is called as historic accounting. Now ROIC or ROCE is also a similar measure. This is telling you about the past of the company. It is not necessary that a company that has generated historic good returns in the past on ROCE will continue to generate very good returns in the future. And it is also not given that a company whose ROCE has temporarily shrunk it will continue to derail. So that is one of the prime reasons why I have not sold HDFC AMC because I feel that HDFC AMC will improve its ROC and will come back, but Marcellus has sold. So basically just doing ROIC or ROC based investing might not be the right method. You have to look at things more holistically. Now the fourth myth of investing is that you should use stop loss while investing. This is a new thing that is coming up in the market and a lot of investors on Twitter are propagating this thing that you know what, you should put stop losses while investing in the stock market. Now, I don't know where this myth started from, but this is complete nonsense and I will explain you why systematically. So first and foremost, what is meant by stop loss? So stop loss simply means, so let's say that ITC is trading at 250 rupees. You buy it and you put a stop loss of 220 rupees. So what does this mean? It simply means that if ITC falls to 220 rupees, ITC will be sold from your portfolio at a 30 rupee loss and you will move away. So this is what stop loss investing is. The advantage of this is that if for some reason the stocks keep on falling way down, then you are preventing your losses because ITC can go up to even zero rupees also, right? So from that perspective, stop loss investing makes a lot of sense, but passing it off as a general rule is complete nonsense and here is why. So first and foremost, doing this type of stop loss investing only makes sense on very limited set of stocks, which are extremely, extremely volatile. For example, Mr. Vijay Kedia, invest in a bunch of small cap, mid cap companies. He rarely invests in big blue chip companies and he takes very risky bets that out of 10 bets that he might take, six of them will probably end up making 80, 85, 90% losses also. And 20, 30% of his bet that survive, that gives him big returns. So for those type of investments, it might make sense to do stop loss investing. But otherwise, if you and I as normal retail investors are investing in decent large cap companies, please do not do stop loss investing. You will not make money. Stop loss is done on trading or gambling. I'm not mixing the two. Stop loss is done on trading or gambling. It is not done on investing, especially by retail investors, please do not believe in that theory. So first reason why you should be doing stop loss investing is that you hold extremely volatile stocks, which you have no control of and you don't know anything about it. Second key reason that you don't have any holding power in the stock market. For example, if you borrow money to invest in the stock market, First and foremost, you should not be doing it. But if you have done it, then maybe it makes sense for you to do stop loss investing. Holding power means that you have to pay your college fees. If you're not able to withdraw money from the stock market, you will be expelled from college. They will not listen to your argument. So what do you do? You sell your portfolio to pay your college fees. So first and foremost, as normal retail investors, whatever money you are investing in the stock market, please assume a timeline of two to three years. Why? Because markets are deliberately moved up and down, up and down in cycles. 
if you get stuck in the wrong cycle you will have to sell good stocks at unnecessarily bad prices let me give you an example of hdfc bank from current scenario so here is the chart of hdfc bank and you will see that at its peak it was trading at roughly 1700 rupees right now it is trading at roughly 1320 rupees so there has been a fall of roughly 25 30 ish percent from its peak now you tell me if you would have done stop loss investing on hdfc bank you would have booked your loss and gone away on one of the most fundamentally sound stocks now i'm not saying that it cannot fall further but ask the proponents of stop loss investing why did you invest in hdfc bank at the peak and if you are investing here why are you not downward averaging such a stock if you have the leeway to do it why are you not hedging your risk why are you not managing your risk so all they do is gamble with blue chip stocks and then give commentary and you know what you should be doing like stop loss investing this is complete nonsense please do not believe in it if you don't have even two to three years of holding power on good stocks individual stock market investing might not be the right place for you now comes the fifth and final myth that you must invest only in high dividend paying stocks i had made a separate video on dividend based stocks please go and watch it it's a very detailed video i will recap important information from that video so first and foremost just because a company is giving you very good dividend does not mean that it is a good stock a classic case in point is coal india and here you can check that dividend yield is approximately 8.48 percent and here is the stock history so if you would have purchased this stock sometime in 2015 your investment would have lost approximately 60 percent of its value what would you do with eight percent dividend and also please understand the concept of dividend yield again please watch my video on dividend i have explained this concept in detail so you can understand more from there now many a times people are not buying good stocks which are paying very low dividends a classic case in point is Nestle. So here you can see that the dividend yield is 1.14%. Now you'll say that, okay, so little dividend, I will rather invest my money in fixed deposit. But take a look at the stock price growth. Any year, pick any two random points and take a two to three year window between them. Stock would have easily given you 40 to 50% return easily. So the main message that I want to give here is that please do not run after these stated things that buy only dividend paying stocks. No, it depends on the company. If it is performing well, if it is making good product, if it is a good business which will survive, please buy this. Therefore, it is said that please do not buy stocks, buy companies. If their business is likely to survive, then you are going to make money automatically. This brings us to the final section that what are three buy and forget type of stocks I would be putting my money on. Now, of course, I can be wrong. I will be reevaluating the business models from time to time. But as of now, these are the following three companies that I'm bullish about from a buy and forget perspective, at least for a little while. And the main criteria that I'm using here is that will this company be able to survive the next five to 10 years? So first and foremost, the strongest company that I would talk about in India would be Hindustan Unilever and HDFC Bank. So these two major organizations, according to me, are going to thrive irrespective of high inflation environment, problems in the economy. If India has to grow, HDFC bank type of banks will have to grow. If some scam gets uncovered, all that stuff, of course, the stock can suffer a little bit. But the bottom line is that from a business point of view, there is absolutely zero problems with both of these companies. Second type of stock or second series of stock that I'll be very bullish about would be something like Amazon. I feel that Amazon is one company that is going to dominate the next decade for sure. Jeff Bezos, not only one of the richest people in India, he knows how to build businesses. He has been making monopolies after monopolies. And with time, his businesses are becoming stronger and stronger. One of the key things that has helped Amazon survive is very simple that they think long term. They think about the next 10 years. They are also experimenting on metaverse. They are also experimenting in the crypto space, blockchain space. Please don't think that they are not. They are preparing for the next step. So even if you're not a conventional blockchain slash crypto investor, etc., Investing in these type of big giants can help you a lot. Third and finally, I feel Apple is a great company from a brand value perspective. More than anything else, more than product innovation, etc, etc. I am very, very confident about Apple's brand value. Now, the best thing is that all these stocks are available at a massive discount right now. Now, this is not an advice from my side. Go and invest. Please take your own decision. All I'm simply saying is that these companies have very high chances of survival. You don't need to do any stop loss investing on these type of companies. Also a disclaimer that if you invest in four or five of these companies, some scam might get uncovered. You might lose all your money on one of these companies, but two out of four companies that are going to survive the next decade, they are going to generate massive returns for you and would offset all the losses that you're making and will put insane amount of money into your pocket. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please press the like button and share it with your friends and I will see you soon.